Hello everybody, welcome back to the Convenient Car Channel where things just aren't very convenient at all. So, it's been a long time. It's been, I think, eight, nine months, almost a year, maybe even, maybe even about a year coming up since the last time we made a video. I think the last video we posted was of the Volkswagen barbecue that I did last August, so I guess that would make it about eight or nine months since then. Um, I mean, there's been a lot going on, but nothing really much going on at the same time. Uh, I blew up the Passat. That's the first thing. I'll explain why here in a second. Just haven't really been making videos. I mean, it's been a really garbage season. There hasn't been a lot going on in town. It's been rainy, wet, snowy. Probably could have done some stuff during the snow season, you know, some rowdy stuff. Because I actually got a Subaru. You guys haven't seen that yet. I'll post a little bit more about that later. Like I said, there's a lot... A lot of things to explain, essentially. But uh, I'm trying to pick things back up, have more things going on, just get some content rolling because it's just it's been so long. I just like I don't know what's been going on. I mean, it's been I've been working. Everybody else has been doing their own thing, and it's just been chill. It's been how how it's been. So I'm hoping as the weather gets a little bit nicer, we can start picking up videos again, start going to more car meets, doing more car related things. As I said before, I blew up the Passat. I'll show you guys some pictures of the aftermath and what happened here in a few. But let's just say I had my boost controller on my Subaru because it's a EJ22 Turbo uh, Legacy, first gen. And I, I ran the boost controller on that for a little bit and, you know, whatever. Uh, so I was in a hurry to put it back on the Passat because I was going to take it for one last ride before I pulled the transmission, did a little bit more transmission work. And I accidentally plugged the vacuum line from it onto the top of the wastegate instead of the side of it. So basically the vacuum port was just open on the wastegate, full throttled it, probably pushed a little bit over 30 PSI and it leaned out and fucking completely exploded. Anyways, so uh, this is the aftermath of the VR that I blew up. We've got an ARP rod bolt that's just bent. Shows you the strength of an ARP right there. Uh, here we have the top of a connecting rod. The uh, wrist pin is actually inside this oil filter housing. It shot straight through it. And then over here, we have pieces of the piston completely fucking mangled. Just tattered. And there's just debris throughout the whole fucking thing. Essentially, I mean, it put a rod through the side of the block. The, uh, the, the piston got sucked into the lower end because the rod snapped in half. And then what it did is it shut out the side of the block, which I don't really understand how a cast piston goes through the side of a cast iron block. It doesn't make sense to me, but it did. The wrist pin from the piston flew through the side of the block and actually made it inside of the oil filter housing, the uh, canister. And the wrist pin was sitting perfectly inside the oil filter. So anyways, that motor is completely toast. I just picked up a new one recently. It's all stripped down, not completely, just down to the short block. I'm currently sanding it down, getting it ready for paint. So I decided this is a really good place to start another video so I can kind of bring you guys through the basics from bottom to top of what I'm doing on the VR6 Turbo build this time around. That way you guys can kind of get a note for yourself on how to do it. It's it's pretty simple. I mean, once once you learn how to fucking put one of those together, I mean, it's almost butter. It's like muscle memory at this point. I could do it with my eyes closed. But yeah, so um, I'll show you guys some pictures and videos, whatever I have. I'm not really sure what's on my phone currently, but I'll be posting those on here maybe after this clip or whenever I decide to throw it in. And yeah, so that's pretty much where we're sitting at right now. Um, it's dark out. It's like 12 at night. I decide to spontaneously start a video. So that's where we are now. And also, if you guys haven't liked, subscribed, or commented on any of our videos yet, do so now in this video. Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, follow me on Instagram right here, and on to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the Convenient Car Channel where things just aren't very convenient at all. So we're going to do a little bit of a update on the Passat here. As you can see, it's been sitting for a while. Front end's all torn apart. We're going to pop the hood here. 
and I'll show you the uh, tube framework. Okay. So you guys have probably all seen this before. Uh, I did repaint it. It's now a copper color. The harness is just kind of sitting out and everything. And this is kind of where it's it's been sitting for a little bit. It's got a lot of moisture on the inside. It needs a lot to be cleaned up. But um, yeah, tube frame looks pretty decent for a spray paint job. It's kind of hard to see on this iPhone camera. But uh, that's what I'm going to be working with. And you'll see the color scheme once everything goes together. But let me show you the engine now. I got this uh, new tent here since the weather has been pretty garbage. And now I'll show you the engine block. So uh, here we are on the inside of my tent. It's actually pretty big. Uh, here's all the accessories from the uh, motor that I bought. It's from Mark IV, as you can see by the uh, intake manifold. Uh, we got this head. I'm actually going to probably sell it or keep it as an extra because it's still good. It's got a uh, pretty new valve seals and stuff in it. But this is the block that I bought. As you can see, uh, it was already painted once. I tried to paint it, but uh, there was too much moisture outside, so it ended up just peeling and cracking and looked disgusting. I was trying to uh, match uh, some other accessories, like this tensioner and oil cooler, with the same color as the tube frame, but it started peeling, came out like crap, so I'm going to have to redo that as well. But yeah, it's getting all stripped down right now. It looks like crap, because I still need to uh, sand it a lot more. I've already cleaned the uh, piston heads a little bit. The surface has been cleaned. It's starting to rust because it's been sitting for a little bit. So I'm going to go back through a few more times to make sure everything's clean before I end up throwing it together. But basically, this is just how it's sitting. I just need to paint it and then start throwing it back together. Coming over here, we've got my new ARP rod bolts that I'm going to be assembling in the bottom end, keeping it all stock. And then I'll be throwing this Mark III pan on, the same one I had on the other motor, because it has the bung already welded into it. And then the bottom end should be all set. That's all we're doing to it. Just air peas and call them a day. The head that was previously on the engine, the one that I got the uh, SuperTech valves installed on, you'll see the aftermath here on the cylinder. Got a little beat. Everything looks like it's seated still. I'm going to do a little leak down test on it. All of the other uh, valves look fine. They need to be cleaned, obviously. But um, I noticed coming over here, if you look right in the side, right there, if it focuses, uh, there's a piece of what I'm going to think is a piston. I don't know how it got in on this side, but uh, it's actually stopping this valve from closing all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting the cam on this side with just one of the lifters. And I'm going to see if I can open that valve a little bit, get that out, make sure it seats, do a leak down test on it, and then we'll know if we can use this head again or not. It's coming back in the tent. I'm going to grab some of these uh, cam bridges, cam caps, take that one lifter, and then we're going to come over here and take one of the cams, which is the exhaust side, which is the longer one, and I'm going to be using all of the ones off of uh, this head because I just don't want to assemble any of my good parts back together and maybe ruin it, so we're just going to try to pull out that little, that little shrapnel piece with uh, these pieces. Okay, so we got the bridges cranked down just snug enough, not even torqued because we're not even going to be running this like this. Uh, obviously the other lifters are still out so none of the lobes are going to touch them. I didn't worry about putting oil on top of the uh, lifter either because we aren't going to be running these cams, uh, caps, or these lifters. And all I'm going to do is turn the end of this cam until it pushes down the lifter, opens the spring, and then hopefully get that little thing out and seat it. Got the head turned over, got my 15 mil socket on the end of the cam. We're just going to turn this. If I can focus, probably not. This is really hard to do with one hand. And I'm going to open the valve as so, and then try to get that piece out. I have the valve open. The piece was actually that guy right there. And uh, I'm probably going to end up doing this with all the valves, make sure they're all clean, everything seats correctly, because I am going to be reusing this, just cleaning off the surface. I only had about a few thousand miles on the head, so I don't think it's going to be warped, but I am going to check the... Uh, Deck clearance, make sure it's flat, and then we should be good to throw this guy back together. The uh, exhaust side port's completely full. And so far, I haven't seen any sort of water dripping out any of the valves, so that's good. I'm um, going to give it a few and then flip over to the back side, and then we'll know. So today, I got the block painted on the VR6 completely. It's right here. Uh, we're going to be installing the head today, showing you how to put on the ARP head studs. We are going to be using the 
ultra torque assembly lube from my rod bolts i'm just going to get more for the rod bolts later because i don't have any for my arps because i'm going to be reusing my old ones they're sitting in this little soapy bin right here i just tooted uh so yeah i'll show you pretty much how to do this it's pretty simple pretty easy so yeah let's do it so i got the head cleaned up not perfect but it's definitely where i want it everything's all cleaned off i still need to clean the insides i want to make sure i get where the uh, washers seat for the ARP studs on the head. Get those cleaned up a little bit more. But basically, I'm gonna go over one time. There's a little bit uh, a little bit of surface rust on here still. I'm just gonna go over with some Scotch-Brite and some engine degreaser and clean up this a little bit more, spray out the uh, cylinders because there was a little bit of shit in there that got in there from painting it and doing other stuff and just from sitting in here. So I'm gonna make sure all this is clean and then I'll pretty much show you how to install the studs itself. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put the studs in first, make sure all the dowel pins are in place, and then I'm going to be laying the head right over it. Alright, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reusing my old VR6 head spacer that I used before. I still need to clean this up a lot. Uh, essentially, if you don't know, the use of a head spacer is to lower the compression. The stock compression of a VR6 is 10 to 1. Uh, this is an 8.5 to 1 head spacer. I can't remember the exact thickness of it, but it lowers it down to 8.5 to 1. This basically makes it safer to run and boost. You don't blow head gaskets as easily because it's completely metal. And less contact between the valves and the piston itself. So it's easier to run a lot more boost safely. I have my uh, handy dandy drill here. I need to find a drill bit for it. So what you do when you run a he head spacer is you got to make sure you have the Mark IV head gasket because the Mark III ones are just some, some I don't even know how to explain the material. It's not completely metal like the Mark IVs are. So this is a triple layer gasket. It's held in the corners by all these rivets. And basically what you do is you want to find a drill bit the size of that rivet, the exact size of it. And what you do is you drill out all of the rivets and since it's a three layer metal head gasket, you pull it apart, you take the middle layer, toss it, and what you do is you take the top and bottom layer of this head gasket and lay it over the top and bottom of this head spacer. And that's basically how you run it as a spacer. So it's a lot safer for boost, a lot stronger, you won't blow a head gasket as easily, and mixing it with the ARP head studs is gonna make it pretty much bulletproof. I'm gonna take my handy dandy razor blade here, cut open this wrapping. It's actually really hard to do this shit. With one hand, I'm gonna peel this apart, pull the cover off, so I can show you guys oh, the triple layer on this gasket. So basically, if I can pry it with my fingers, you got the top layer of the actual gasket, you have the bottom layer, and then that thin little metal layer, we delete that and put the head spacer in its place, and it's a lot thicker. So I know I didn't really explain this before, but if you guys want to know how to clean the surface off of your head, including the piston tops and right here where compression is being made, um, I actually got this from Humble Mechanic. You guys have probably seen his videos just because he's really popular. I use heavy duty Scotch-Brite. You can find this at Lowe's or whatever. Uh, you can use WD-40. You can use engine degreaser. This is just what I had, so I used engine degreaser, and it works really good. You can get all the carbon deposits out of the sides right here, and most of it off of the piston heads itself. Just take a little bit. I just put a little bit of this on the surface of the uh, Scotch Brights, and I just give it a hard scrub. And you see, there's still a little bit of residue, but as long as it's flat and you can't feel it with your fingernail, then you should be good to go. Also, to get all of the built-up head gasket that's on top of your VR6 head. Just take some of this, uh, scrub it good all over with Scotch-Brite, that's the way I did it. So I made sure everything was pretty much soaked in the engine degreaser. And then I take a razor blade, a brand new sharp one, and you just slightly scrape the sides off. I know I don't really have a razor blade on me and it's not the best explanation, but if you guys wanted to know, that's the best way. Well, I wouldn't say the best way, but that's a good way to get your VR6 cleaned before you throw a new head gasket on or put a new head on. Also, when you when you tear down your motor uh, or you buy a new block or however you do it always look inside your cylinders and make sure there is still cross hatching in the cylinder walls if you if there isn't then you're gonna want to get that re-honed out before you put in your head studs 
you always want to make sure that all the holes that your studs thread into are clean. If you look in mine, there's probably a lot of debris in there. You can see a lot in the threads. The reason why you don't want to just send them with all the dirt and stuff in there is you can either fuck up the threads or when you torque it down, it won't torque down correctly. So make sure you take something like an air hose. I got mine right here. And make sure to just blow all of that stuff out. Make sure it's as clean as you can get it. And then, yeah, you'll be ready to throw your bolts in. So I took my drill. I got all of the rivets drilled out. You can pretty much do it just until it pops off. Still got to take the back siding off of the bottom. And then I'm going to split this apart, clean up the head spacer, throw it on, and then we'll get to assembling the studs into it. So one thing I did is I soaked all of my uh, ARP bolts inside of soapy water along with my washers and my nuts. You don't have to do this if you bought new ones. I'm just reusing mine from the last setup. So I just want to make sure all the threads are clean and they're not all grimy. So we're going to make sure everything's clean. I already made sure the surface of the head is completely clean and my head spacer is now clean. So we are going to take the section where you can actually see the Victor Rhine's uh, decals on it. See how the other part doesn't have it. Make sure that's facing the bottom. Make sure this is in the dowel. Get that guy all flat. Make sure it's all settled. Pretty sure there's another one that goes here. But I don't remember. So we're going to get that laid down. And then next... We're going to lay down the actual head spacer over that. Make sure that also goes in where the dowel is. And I'm going to make sure these are all perfectly aligned before I actually put the studs in. Coming to the last piece of the gasket, we're going to throw that over as well. You want to make sure that the uh, Victor Rhine's portions are always facing the head of the block. Get that in there as best as possible. And then what I'm going to be doing next is applying the ARP lube on the bottom of two head studs just to put them in each corner to make sure that the actual head gasket and spacer sit straight. So I came to my uh, old block that I exploded and I pulled the other dowel pin out of this. So I'll be using this for the, uh, the new one. Alright, so we got some of the assembly lube on one of the actual bolts for the ARPs. When looking at the ARP bolts, see how this side has a little hump on it? that side doesn't you always want to make sure the hump goes towards the bottom I actually might have put a little bit too much on this so preserve as much as possible but I'm gonna use my fingers and get this all mixed together and then put it inside the actual block oh yeah we got Alex here by the way he actually fixed his Audi you guys didn't even know it was crashed but it did I'll show you some stuff later about it but back onto this so I'm actually gonna start threading these in you see the ARP lube is on there I'm doing it uh, with the uh, head gasket and spacer on it already just because it's easier so I don't have to try to force the gasket onto the studs because you can bend it that way. So when you put these in, you see how they have a little Allen head on there. It's actually a standard size, not metric. Uh, you want to make sure they bottom out hand tight. You do not want to tighten them in because torquing on the nut will do that for you. All right, guys, so we got all of the ARP head bolts into the head itself. I have all of the um, Ultra Torque assembly lube. It's all on the bottoms. As you see, the uh, head gasket and everything's on. We put everything in afterwards so it was easier. Uh, I'm actually going to lube up the top threads of all of these as well before I throw the head on. And then I'll be cleaning out the little inlets in the head. That way I can put the washers back in. And then we'll be torquing it down. All right, so I got the surface of my head as clean as I could get it. It looks like there's still a little bit of material left, but it's all flat. It's just kind of engraved into the head. I also made sure that the head gasket on top after I put the bolts in was clean again, and now we're ready to drop it on. All right, Alex is a little shit talker. But anyways, uh, so we got the head on. Looks really good. Compliments the black that I repainted really well. So you can see, boom. Now we got the head spacer in there. I'm actually going to come through and clean all of this out because you can see there's still a bunch of debris and there's some pine needles and stuff in there. And I'm going to make sure all of these are looking mint before I put the, uh, the washers and uh, nuts back in. And then we'll get ready to uh, torque it down again. The washers have been placed in the head. I made sure everything was clean before I dropped them in. And now it's, now it's down to putting the ARP nuts on there. I'm going to make sure these guys get snug down all the way first 
and then I'll do it in a tor uh, torque sequence. All right, so I got all of the nuts hand tightened all the way around, all 20 of them. Uh, I'm going to post a little picture here of the sequence that you need to do. It's going to be facing from the intake front side and then the torque specs as well because that's what I'm going to be doing about right now.